Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about combo um, panels. Mm -hmm. What a combo panel is, is a, an alarm panel that can handle both fire and intrusion functionality. And this is something that has been embraced by some, but not all, so we're gonna tell you a little more about it. Take it away, Ari. So the G series panel, the B8512G, the B9512G, the new G series panel is UL listed for intrusion and for fire, for commercial fire. So up until recently, relatively recently, uh, you didn't see people using fire and intrusion on the same panel. Uh, in 2007, in the 2007 NFPA update, it became legal to use uh, intrusion and fire on the same panel. But you still didn't see a lot of people doing it because um, some people didn't feel as though intrusion panels uh, had the same quality or the same lifespan as uh, a typical fire panel would have. Uh, most intrusion panels didn't have, couldn't support the same number of sensors or the same number of outputs or the same number of enunciators as a typical fire panel could. But that has changed recently. The new G-Series panel is, uh, I think, uh, very well suited for uh, fire functions. We have been doing more and more projects with the G-Series panel, more and more fire projects with the G-Series panel. And uh, I just wanted to make sure all our customers knew a little bit more about it. There are some best practices that you would want to keep in mind, and I want to make sure everybody knew about the best practices. Now, of course, as with any life safety application, the AHJ, the authority having jurisdiction, always has the final say. So make sure you know the local fire codes in your jurisdiction. Make sure you know who has to sign off on a fire project in your jurisdiction. But uh, these are just industry best practices. These are just things that we always see on uh, a fire project time to time again. First, there's the red enclosure. Obviously, life safety uh, products are traditionally mounted in a red box, and that's because you have to call out uh, the uh, life safety control panel, and you have to keep it in a locked box. Typically speaking, you'll see uh, a red box, and you'll see a red box for junctions, and power supplies, auxiliary power supplies, things like that. You also see the fire enunciator, which is what the keypad is in a fire application. You also see that as being red instead of being the beige or the black that you're usually seeing in a uh, intrusion system. Speaking of fire enunciators, uh, the difference between a fire enunciator and an alarm keypad is that a fire enunciator will have the different functions for the different fire functions. Uh, for example, you'll have a drill button, you'll have a, re a sensor reset button, you'll have the different lights, you know, the different indicator lights for supervisory uh, alarms that uh, you'll get on a fire system that's different than what you would get on an intrusion system. And for a uh, full overview, you can see the B9925F videos that uh, I did earlier this year. So another thing that you have to keep in mind when you're doing a fire alarm design is the two paths of communication. You do have to have two communication methods. Traditionally, this was accomplished with uh, a, dual fire, a dual telephone uh, splitter, mm -hmm. but we are moving away from telephones as, uh, as an industry, we're moving from telephones, uh, away from telephone line communication as a company. Uh, you can see the videos that we did that explain all the problems that uh, our customers are uh, experiencing when trying to communicate over a telephone line. So, all Bosch alarm panels, including the G-Series panel, they now come with uh, an Ethernet port on board for native IP communication. The G-Series panel does come with two slots for communication modules. Uh, we make a telephone module for those applications where you do require uh, telephone communication, but we also make a cellular module, and you can fill those two communication module slots however you like. You can also 
set priority, you can assign routing groups, you can change the supervision time from uh, intrusion standard supervision time to fire standard supervision time so that you are in compliance with NFPA or any other uh, uh, codes that might govern uh, fire alarm jurisdictions in your, uh, in your area. Of course, we also have a full line of sensors. We have the F220 series of smoke detectors. They come with uh, swappable bases, so standard base in two wire, four wire, or addressable. We have bases uh, that are standard bases, but we also make bases with sounders. We make bases with auxiliary relays. We make uh, uh, bases with EOLs and with uh, power supervision. We have the photoelectric sensor head uh, that can just do smoke. We also have smoke plus heat, and we have smoke plus heat plus CO. We also have a full line of manual pull stations, a line of duct detectors, a line of beam detectors, and of course, like I said, two wire, four wire, or addressable. Um, if you do use addressable, you would have to convert the panel from conventional to addressable using a B299 POPX module. As we said before, the panel supports up to 599 sensors, up to 599 outputs, and up to 32 different enunciators. So as you can see, the Bosch G-Series panel is ideal for both fire and intrusion applications, and you can use those for, uh, you can have fire and intrusion in a single panel, especially if you're doing off-site monitoring, especially if you're doing a uh, remote managed, a uh, remote managed system. Great. So if you have any fire design, send them our way. We're happy to help you. Mm -hmm. And it's anything else? Well, as always, let us know if you need uh, a demo, if you need a site visit, if you need uh, help with your system design. And Katie and I are waiting for your call.